Tonight, a dramatic announcement from the Princess of Wales revealing she has been diagnosed with cancer. Princess Kate, after months of silence, releasing a video message with the news she was diagnosed with cancer after major abdominal surgery and is undergoing chemotherapy. The 42-year-old calling it a huge shock and describing the difficulty of breaking the news with husband Prince William to their three children. And it comes as King Charles faces his own cancer battle. Also tonight, terror in Russia. Gunmen in combat fatigues, opening fire and setting off explosives at a large concert hall. At least 40 people killed, 100 others injured. A massive inferno erupting. A terror group claiming responsibility. The grim discovery in the search for missing college student Riley Strain in Nashville. Tracking back-to-back -back spring storms, snow and heavy rain stretching from the Midwest to the Northeast. The deadline for former President Trump, three days left to post a nearly half-billion-dollar bond as the New York AG takes the first step to seize his properties. The clash at the border. Video of migrants storming a fence overwhelming the National Guard. The new details. And a cat's tail. The library where felines equal forgiveness. This is NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Good evening and welcome, everyone. After weeks of worry, questions, and speculation about her health, Britain's Princess Kate has publicly revealed she is being treated for cancer. Kensington Palace this evening releasing a video from Kate recorded on Wednesday in which she spoke frankly about her recent abdominal surgery, learning tests after the operation found cancer had been present, and sharing the news she is undergoing a chorus of preventative chemotherapy. The 42-year-old Princess of Wales also describing the time it has taken to explain everything to their three children and to reassure them, as she put it, that I'm going to be okay. Tonight, support and good wishes for the princess coming in from around the world, including the U.S., where Prince Harry and Meghan are wishing health and healing for Kate and the family. Molly Hunter is in London and has late details. It has been an incredibly tough couple of months for our entire family. Tonight, after months away from her royal duties out of the public eye, a deeply personal update from the Princess of Wales. In January, I underwent major abdominal surgery in London. And at the time, it was thought that my condition was non-cancerous. The surgery was successful. However, tests after the operation found cancer had been present. My medical team therefore advised that I should undergo a course of preventative chemotherapy and I'm now in the early stages of that treatment. This, of course, came as a huge shock, and William and I have been doing everything we can to process and manage this privately for the sake of our young family. Kate's health has been the subject of speculation and wild conspiracy theories for weeks, only heightened by a Mother's Day photo which the 42-year-old later apologized for altering. And just days ago, UK media reports that the clinic where Kate underwent surgery back in January could be investigating three staffers for allegedly trying to access her medical records. It has taken me time to recover from major surgery in order to start my treatment. But most importantly, it has taken us time to explain everything to George, Charlotte and Louis in a way that's appropriate for them and to reassure them that I'm going to be okay. Kate also highlighting the support she's received from the Prince of Wales. Having William by my side is a great source of comfort and reassurance too, as is the love, support and kindness that has been shown by so many of you. It means so much to us both. 75-year-old King Charles is also being treated for an undisclosed cancer discovered during a January prostate procedure. Tonight, the King saying he is so proud of Catherine for her courage in speaking as she did. And from California, Harry and Meghan saying, we wish health and healing for Kate and the family and hope they're able to do so privately and in peace. No matter how you look at this news, it is clear that the royal family is in crisis. This not only is a crisis for a family, a family of human beings, a grandfather, a son, parents, but this is a crisis for the royal family as an institution. Tonight, messages of support coming in from around the world. And we'll be praying for them. We will be, we'll be praying for the family. They've been through the mill a little bit over the last few years. We wish her a full recovery. And Kate's brother saying, 
Over the years, we have climbed many mountains together as a family. We will climb this one with you, too. As she continues her treatment, Kate asking for privacy for her family. We hope that you'll understand that as a family, we now need some time, space and privacy while I complete my treatment. My work has always brought me a deep sense of joy and I look forward to being back when I'm able. But for now, I must focus on making a full recovery. And at the end of her video message, the Princess of Wales taking the time to offer words of comfort and hope for those also affected by cancer. For everyone facing this disease, in whatever form, please do not lose faith or hope. You are not alone. Molly, are we expecting any more health updates from the palace? Lester, we're not expecting anything more from Kensington Palace. They have still not revealed what type of cancer she has. As far as when we'll see her next, recovery is clearly her priority, and they haven't set a date. Lester? Molly Hunter in London, thank you. And joining us now is Dr. Eleanor Toplinski, the head of breast and gynecological medical oncology at Valley Health System in New Jersey. Doctor, we appreciate you being here. Can you describe the type of side effects that typically someone would experience under chemotherapy? Some of the most common side effects that we see with chemotherapy are hair loss, fatigue, joint pain, GI side effects such as nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, loss of taste and low blood counts, causing someone to be immunosuppressed. It was very poignant hearing Kate wrestling with how to explain this to her children. As a physician, I'm sure you deal with the emotional impact of cancer as well as the physical. Can you describe what it's like for a young mom in, in this situation? This is one of the hardest things that a woman has to go through, telling her children she wants them to be okay. And it's hard to break the news, but I always tell my patients, Give your children a hug. Tell them that you love them. They just want to know that you're going to be okay. Dr. Eleanor Toplinski, thank you so much. Here at home, sad news today about Riley Strain. The body of the Missouri college student was discovered nearly two weeks after he disappeared in Nashville. Kathy Park is there. Tonight in Nashville, a heartbreaking discovery. After a massive two-week search, the body of missing college student Riley Strain was found in the Cumberland River eight miles downstream from where he went missing. I just ask that you mamas out there hug your babies tight tonight, please. <laughs> please for me. Police say workers were removing a barge from the river when they spotted Riley's body. Authorities say his death appears to be a tragic accident. There's no other evidence that suggests anything other than there are no signs of foul play at this time according to the examination here at the uh, river bank. Riley was last seen on March 8th. Security camera footage from that night shows him stumbling alone after being escorted out of Luke Bryan's bar. Around 9.52 p.m., Riley briefly interacted with an officer in downtown Nashville, showing no signs of distress. How are you doing, sir? I'm good. How are you? Good. The University of Missouri student was on a trip with his fraternity and never made it back to his hotel room. The search expanded as police and volunteers used boats and sonar equipment to look for clues. Earlier this week, two women discovered Riley's bank card. We could have found his credit card. We got to hang out. His family, who hoped to find their son before his graduation this May, now must plan a funeral instead. Police say Riley was found with the same shirt and watch he had on the night he went missing. An autopsy is planned for today. Lester. Kathy Park, thank you. And tonight we're following a double dose of winter weather with parts of the Midwest getting as much as nine inches of snow today. And it's far from over. 26 million people are under winter weather alerts from the plains to the northeast. Tens of millions more are at risk of flooding from heavy rain expected tomorrow along the east coast. Tonight, former President Donald Trump is in a real cash crunch, facing a Monday deadline to post a bond of almost half a billion dollars in that New York civil fraud case or potentially face seizure of his properties. Garrett Hake has late details. Donald Trump is running out of time tonight to protect his properties from potential seizure by the state of New York. He has until Monday to secure a nearly half a billion dollar bond to satisfy the court's civil fraud judgment against him, which his lawyers say cannot be done. 
This is manifest injustice. It is impossible. It's an impossibility. But the former president today claiming on social media he has, quote, almost $500 million in cash, which he had intended to spend on his campaign, despite having neither spent nor loaned any of his own money to his campaign since 2016. I'd like to take the cash away so I can't use it on the campaign. And this is just a corrupt group of people. It's election interference. Mr. Trump's attorneys have argued he should not be liable for the bond while his case is being appealed. The attorney general is poised to move quickly to seize his assets if she decides to. In early March, her office filed judgment in New York's Westchester County, home to Mr. Trump's Seven Springs estate and a Trump National Golf Course, a necessary step to potentially seize those properties later. Mr. Trump's New York City properties could also be in the AG's crosshairs, a possibility Mr. Trump has used to raise money for his campaign. His allies have dismissed the possibility the self-proclaimed billionaire might file for bankruptcy or sell off properties quickly to free up cash. Mr. Trump could see a windfall from a deal approved today to take his true social media company public, but he can't sell his shares, perhaps worth billions, for six months. Lester. All right, Garrett, thank you. Tonight on Capitol Hill, a surprise motion to oust House Speaker Mike Johnson after the House passed a $1.2 trillion bill to keep the government running. Ryan Nobles is following it all. Ryan, good evening. Lester, good evening. And it is Georgia Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene who filed that motion to vacate the House Speaker Mike Johnson after he put that $1.2 trillion spending bill on the House floor. It passed the House with a two-thirds majority, angering conservatives who said that the bill spends too much money. Now, Greene's motion, though, is on indefinite hold because she did not add in a provision that would allow it to be voted on immediately. And there are many House Republicans who just do not have the appetite to go through the process of removing another House Speaker. Meanwhile, senators are actively negotiating a plan to speed up their vote on the spending bill tonight in order to meet the midnight deadline. Lester. Okay, Ryan, thank you. In 60 seconds, the MLB launching an investigation into the scandal involving one of its biggest stars. Just in tonight, Major League Baseball formally launching an investigation into the scandal involving Los Angeles Dodgers superstar Shohei Otani and his interpreter. The Dodgers firing that interpreter Wednesday after allegations of illegal gambling and a massive theft from Otani. And up next, desperate days in Haiti. We're at the border speaking with some of those struggling to survive. Just in from Texas, a school bus carrying more than 40 pre-kindergartners colliding with a cement truck and rolling over. Police say two people were killed. It happened about an hour east of Austin as the bus was returning from a field trip to a zoo. We're back now also with a crisis in Haiti as the country spirals into chaos. Another 18 Americans were evacuated today in helicopters to the neighboring Dominican Republic, where our Ellison Barber is tonight at the Haiti border. Once again, bullets whizzing through the streets of Port-au-Prince as the National Police Force struggles to release Haiti's capital city from the grip of gangs. Bodies left where they fell, next to gas pumps and collapsed wooded platforms. In between the burst of gunfire, people desperately search for their next meal. Sky News' Stuart Ramsey is in Port-au-Prince. I'm in Port-au-Prince, the capital of Haiti. The people here have no idea when gang violence is going to flare, and the whole of the city has been beset with it for days and days now. So much so that people are now building barricades to try and stop the gangs getting through. Many Haitians now face an unbearable choice, venture outside and risk being shot, or stay inside and go hungry. Roughly 1.4 million Haitians are on the verge of famine, according to the UN, and more than 4 million need food. Haitians who have temporarily been allowed to cross into the Dominican Republic are coming to this market to sell, oftentimes, what little belongings they have to get food, things like eggs, so they can then take it back to their families who are still waiting on the other side in Haiti. Samuel is 18. He tells us he lives in Haiti but comes here to work and take food back to his family. Many innocent people are dying, he says. We do not want violence. We want a free country. The UN says more than 33,000 Haitians have fled Port-au-Prince in the last three and a half weeks. The humanitarian crisis and the violence is only getting worse.
Lester. Ellison Barber, thank you. We'll take a break here and then change gears. When we come back, the library that helped people clean up their accounts with a perfect idea. Finally tonight, a tale of felines and forgiveness. Here's Maya Eaglin. There's something big purring inside the Worcester Public Library. The Aristocats. Oh my God, I love that. Ten-year-old Ella loves all things cats. Cat me. For Ella and many visitors, this fountain of felines is just the catnip they need. All to bring people back to the books. March Meowness allows us to let people forgive their books that they may have lost by showing us a picture of a cat. One cat picture clears one book. One cat picture can clear any books on one account. If you have one book that's lost, it all is forgiven with that one cat. The wall is covered with cool cats, cute cats, cozy cats. Don't have your own furry friend? Download one or just draw a picture. But it's not just the folks in Worcester sending in their cat photos. The program's gone global. More than 10,000 photos of cats, dogs, and other four-legged friends from places like Australia, Germany, France, and South Africa have been crawling into the library's inbox. So many that... We are announcing today that we're clearing all blocked accounts for Worcester Public Library card holders. So how many accounts is that in total? So that'll be just over 3,000 accounts. Who doesn't want to see a cute cat? Ella's dad, Jordan, says he's proud to be part of the cat craze. This is just a great way to say, like, you're welcome. Come in to this great space and enjoy it regardless of how much money you have. These cats serving up smiles with a greater purpose. Maya Eaglin, NBC News, Worcester, Massachusetts. And that is Nightly News. Two programming notes for you. Tune in to Nightly News Kids Edition Saturday morning. Check your local listings for timing and also to meet the press this Sunday for Kristen Welker's exclusive interview with former Supreme Court Justice Stephen Breyer. Thank you for watching, everyone. I'm Lester Holt. Please take care of yourself and each other. Good night. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.